What's going down, man? It's your boy Earl the Monarch, and we back with another movie review. This one is a movie called Barbershop. It's a part of a classic series, and it was released September 13th, 2002, starring Ice Cube, Cedric the Entertainer, Michael Ely, Eve, Anthony Anderson, Lamar Tate, and Keith David. So it starts out with two niggas arguing, driving down the street, and then they back into a convenience store, completely destroying the entire front end in the store. These two masked buffoons are trying to steal an ATM machine. And we're then introduced to our main character, Calvin, who's played by my boy Ice Cube, which the movie came out through his production company, Cube Vision. Shout out to Ice Cube, you know what I'm saying? Calvin is working on his studio equipment, which, you know, goes up in smoke. We're then introduced to Calvin's wife, Jennifer, and Calvin goes on a tangent about Oprah's guest house. Yes, okay. see, look, see that? That right there is Oprah's guest house. Mm -hmm. That's just the guest house. The fuck is he talking about? Why do you have this? We then get a bit of exposition telling us that Calvin has been running the barbershop for two years since his pop died. Well, it has been a whole two years since you took over the barbershop. I mean, look at you. You have hung in there. Baby, you have no idea how proud I am of you. You know your father would have been proud of you, too. We cut to the shop owner's reaction to seeing his store got run in. By the way, this whole movie takes place in the great city of Chicago. We then get some strong words of encouragement from Brother Calvin. Stay strong, bruh. Calvin opened up the shop. Off the rip, two people pull up as soon as he cuts the light on. Calvin, I need a cut. Like how you did Ronnie last week. Little off the top, long in the back, but not quite no shag. Slope to the left like Gumby. Eddie Monster in the front, a little white cliff on the right. Come on, hook that up for me. Nigga, what? So what'd they say? Neither one of these niggas say their name, but trench coat cuz basically gives us the plot of the movie. The bank's not gonna give you another loan. We've already given you a small business loan. And a grant that you used on your other businesses. But if you don't pay the property taxes, the bank is gonna foreclose on the shop. Calvin is behind on the property tax and facing foreclosure on the shop. Calvin then makes a very vague phone call to a Mr. Wallace. Hey, 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 how you doing, Mr. Wallace? Oh yeah, yeah, this is Calvin. You know over at the shop? Yeah. I was just wondering, was you still interested in what we talked about the other day? I'm sure we'll come back to this plot point later. We're then introduced to JD and Billy, who are the two goofballs that stole the ATM machine at the beginning of the movie. Oh, oh, oh. We're then introduced to Terry, who pulls up to a man, Cabin. house trying to catch him cheating. Where is she? Look, hey, let's not do this again, Terry. Where come is on she? now. And Dog is literally the worst cheater on the planet. Why don't you look under the bed? Go ahead, look under the bed. I bet you I would hide a woman under that bed. He said that as if it was some sort of reverse psychology. Oh, yes. But the bitch is under the bed. Then she comes from under the bed and the stupid motherfucker just stands there. Who is she? I don't know. Bruh clown, and we don't claim him because black men don't cheat and I stand on it. Get your ass on, buddy. We're then introduced to brother Jimmy, and we're introduced to him in a fashion as if we're not supposed to like him. Okay, I'm gonna run down, triple non fat, half decaf, soda, French rose caramel cappuccino. Okay, now we're just a splash, we're just a splash. With hazelnut, okay? Orange extract, the extra foam in a separate cup. Let's move around myself because y'all never get it right. I mean, you know, other than that last little statement. All Brett did was order his coffee the way he wanted it. But you know, it's an early 2000s hood movie, so if you didn't drink your coffee black as Michael Blackson, you were a sellout. We then cut to my boy Ricky, who walks in and is thrown into a wild conversation. Hey, hey, you got it's mathematics, cuz, alright? Okay, okay. It's the ratio. Alright, okay. okay. right, now if you measure around a woman's uh, waist, right? Uh -huh. Then you measure around that ass, you come up with a ratio about. Three, five, okay. Right? And ass so big, look like two ninjas in a sleeping bag. Now Jimmy and Ricky have conflict because Jimmy's a know-it-all square nigga and Ricky's a retired street nigga that be fucking all the hoes. We're then introduced to this clown ass cop nigga that low-key wants Ricky to be the person that stole the ATM. Why you come over here, dawg? Why you sweating me? Are you sweating, Richard? Hey, you're a two-time felon. One more. It's all over for you, brother. 
where they introduced Isaac, the low-key coolest nigga in the movie, who be getting hated on because he get black women. Nah, niggas in the shop low-key don't like him because they think he a culture vulture and he the new chair in the shop. The do-rag is crazy. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? But bro low-key cool, for real. We then introduced to OG Eddie, played by Cedric the Entertainer. All right, now listen up. I don't want no trouble. Just give me your wallet and your jewelry and won't be no problem. What? Now, said name has been in a lot of bullshit lately, but that's neither here nor there. You ain't shaking like booty me. What is that? Terry pulls up to the shop, and we get one of the most memorable quotables from the movie. Who drank my apple juice? Maybe no one drank it. Maybe it evaporated. Maybe. Man, shut your bitch ass up, nigga. Nobody asked you about a bitch ass thing. Buddy. Cut to JD and Billy, who's trying to get into the stolen ATM in his mama's house of all places. Bro is definitely trying to go to jail. The little homie walks in and sees them trying to break into the stolen ATM inside the room and threatens to snitch on him. So now they gotta change locations and they run into the comic relief fat nigga of the movie. Big homie got the super sized burger and a drink and he said, fuck what y'all talking about. I'm getting upstairs, homie. <laughs> we cut to Eddie and Jimmy arguing about chicken and being old. When Jimmy fucks up and patches up the little homie. All right, you do. I don't even know what I feel to. What you doing? I gotta patch your Damn, I messed up. We gotta go ball. Oh, oh shit. We then introduced to Mr. Wallace, the dude that you know Calvin was on the phone with earlier. Calvin is trying to sell the shop to Mr. Wallace. Or if you sell it to me, you make sure that the sign outside on that window always says barber shop. Now, if you take this money. That's uh, as good as a contract. I wouldn't want to have any uh, misappropriations going on up in here. Now, after being slightly hesitant, Calvin then takes the bread and sells the shop. But you're a better businessman. You got vision. 20G, that's your buyout. I'll take over the payments from the bank as we discussed. Mr. Wallace then reveals that he's going to turn the barbershop into a strip club. Are you sure you're gonna keep the barbershop open, right? Look, I'm a businessman. And a barbershop ain't exactly a cash cow. So I'm gonna turn it into a gentleman's club. And Calvin ain't feeling it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not what we discussed, Mr. Wallace. It's gonna be called The Barbershop. I'm gonna keep that same theme going. You know, the girls dressed up like little barbers. And uh, you can come in and they'll give you a trim. And you can get some trim. The fellas in the shop arguing about the race of the store owner across the street. He's Pakistani. He's from Pakistan. Well, all I know is he can pack and stand his ass on that corner all he want to. <laughs> when the little homie who got patched up mom walk in and the whole shop turn into weirdos. Ooh. Man, speaking of packing. Boy, what's wrong with you? He got a patch in the back of my head. I did not, man, I did not keep moving. Mm -hmm. well, bless her. Yes, sir. It don't look that bad. Just think of it as a new style. Before you know it, everybody gonna be walking around with a patch in their head. What? Ain't that right? Right? Shorty really ain't that bad. These niggas just kind of some horn dogs, you feel me? <laughs> JD and Billy trying to bring in the cash machine. Billy runs across a nigga that owes him five dollars. Five dollars, Buster. <laughs> JD get on his ass saying, bro, we got 50 bands in the motel back there. And Billy says it's all about the principal. It ain't even about the money. It's the principal. That's right, the principal. Mm -hmm. He owed me money he's supposed to pay. This shot town's finest and I ain't going out like no sucker. We cut back to the shop and D-Ray Davis pops in trying to sell some bootleg dogs. Condoms. Condoms if it's too late. What's with the dogs? Get man? them dogs out uh -huh. You like dogs. You still with old boy? Get them. Eddie then gives all the barbers some free game. See, in my day, 
A barber with mold and just somebody who sit around in a fubu shirt with a draw hanging all out. My day, the barber was a counselor. He was a fashion expert. Uh, he, he was a child coach. You know, just you know, all around hustle. But the problem with y'all cats today is that you got no skill, no sense of history. And then, with a, with a straight face, got the nerve to want to be somebody. Want somebody to respect you. But it take respect to get respect. And then Calvin's wife kind of just spawns in. Calvin. Hey, baby. Can we talk in the back? And she gets on his ass about selling a shot. What did you do? I sold a barbershop. Calvin, you sold your father's barbershop to Lester Wallace? See, Calvin ain't really feeling the generational barbershop no more. And all he did was give away free haircuts. Now they want freebies now. Okay, he let all those barbers in there use their station whenever they wanted to, pay rent whenever they wanted to, and we in debt because of that. We then cut to JD showing off his fucked up ass foot. Damn, I mean, you need a bad day, man. I'm gonna go get that foot. We then cut to Cuz from earlier who's trying to get a fade, and Calvin cuts his hair, and bro shoots off without paying. That's the look right there. And don't hate on the brother because I'm trying I'll to make something like of myself. Black all right? Picasso with a ghetto. Yeah. So everything. <laughs> No, I'm not. Yes. Hey, come on. Run! Run, nigga! Let it go! Get up! Hey, get up! Hey, 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 hey! Calvin goes to the store across the street, and Indian cuz tells Calvin that them stupid ass niggas stole an empty ATM. I do find it amusing that the people who stole my ATM will not get any money out of it. Oh, yeah. You can't break into those things. Because there is no money in it. It is brand new. It had not even been loaded yet. There's no money in it. We then cut to a scorned woman taking out her anger on a brand new Toyota Camry. Get your grip! I'm gonna get you! Real! Oh, oh, what the hell are you doing? That's my car! Stop hitting that car! Stop hitting that car! Calvin is having second thoughts on selling a shop and calls up Mr. Wallace for a meetup. Hey, hey, how you doing, Mr. Wallace? Yeah, this Calvin. You think it'd be all right if I come through there and talk to you? Old Billy fucks up and sets the room on fire. Oh, no! No! Now they gotta move the cash machine. We cut back to the shop and the fellas having a debate about the civil rights movement. Ain't no hateration or no holleration in this dancery, okay? <laughs> One, Rodney King should have got an ass beat for driving drunk and being thrown in a Hyundai. Two, OJ did it. OJ did it. And three, Rose Park ain't do nothing but sit her black ass down. Fuck Jesse Jack! No. No. Calvin has a change of heart. Had a change of heart. And doesn't want to sell the shop. Mr. Wallace says, fuck that, give me double if you want the shop back. The subject of the money I gave you this morning? The money is yours. The shop is mine. If you were to give me my money by, say, uh, seven o'clock? 40 G. But you only gave me 20. Calvin says, look, here's your money. I'm not selling. And we get this weird ass chase scene. Hey, what you, man? You gonna take this no. money? You gonna no. take this money? How you gonna redeem? Hey, hey, hey. Hold on. Hey, hey, no, hey, hey, keep it. You got some. You got some. We cut to old Kevin pulling up to the shop and he jumps straight into the racism. You supersize me, Mandela. You want to get up off my neck? Kevin. Oh, hold on a second, baby. What, you don't understand English? He's trying to win back Terry and she ain't having it and bro goes out like a buster. You're breaking up with me. <laughs> I mean, come on, baby. I mean, look at you. You, you ain't even all that fine. I mean, you, you just average. And then gets bitched out by Triple OG Dink Dog. JD still trying to move this damn cash machine on foot when he runs across bootleg cuz who gives him a ride. Hey, what you got? Nothing. Well, do you and nothing need a ride? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, bring that nothing on. We cut back to Jimmy and Isaac, Loki having a Jim Crow argument. Because your little bitch ass can't compete. Okay. I got news for you, white boy. You're not black. Jimmy, I'm blacker than you. And what's messed up is in your best day, you could never be me. Hey, you gonna take that? Nigga, you a bitch! That then turns into a everybody's happy montage, and Calvin feels like he fucked up. We cut back to the shop, and none of these niggas cutting hair, and they having a debate about reparations and then Ricky then schools Jimmy on scallops. 
Next, you're gonna talk about how the Jews got money from Jews the Holocaust. Jews didn't get money, dog. Holocaust survivors Look, got we money. We had welfare and affirmative action. Is that not respirations? <laughs> Calvin then has a bug out session and flips on old bootleg cuz. How many times I told you not to come in here to listen? Are you retarded? Are you stupid, simple, or slow? Which one? Come back in here, man. I'm gonna call the police. Man, for that. I don't wanna hear that. What's up, man? Right here, man. Oh, you ain't right, Cal. Ain't no you ain't right, man. I don't want him back in the shop. I ain't gonna say it no more. Calvin then tells Eddie that he fucked up. I messed up, Eddie. I messed up bad. Eddie gets on his ass. This ain't no goddamn school of the blind, Calvin. This is the barber shop. The place where a black man means something. Cornerstone neighborhood. Cuz from earlier pops up and gives Cal the money from the fade he got earlier. Bam! <laughs> Calvin then breaks the news to the barber gang. We're gonna be closing up the shop today. I sold the shop. You what? And the shop gets fucking raided by the laws. The whole ass cop from earlier ends up arresting Ricky and come to find out JD and Ricky is cousins. The truck that JD uses still the ATM is registered to Ricky. Ricky calls JD to confront him about it and JD has no remorse and hangs up on old Rick. Did you just say two time loser? That's in your third strike? <laughs> You're going to jail for life, player. And when you do get out, I'm going to be long gone. Woohoo! Hey, don't drop the soap. Jimmy and Isaac have a barber bond moment. And Calvin again feels like, damn, I can't sell this shop, fam. Hey man, I, uh, I shouldn't have disrespected you like that in front of everybody. Nah, it's cool, man. I'm actually kind of glad you came here, Sam. Why is that? Because I was running out of insults. Aww. Calvin bails out Rick and then gets on his ass about the gun that fell out of his locker earlier. Here. Is that what you want? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, my man. Yeah, you came out your man. You dropped out your lock. There you go, man. You want to throw your life away. And throw away the bill money, all the money I put up for you. Calvin and Ricky pull up to Mr. Wallace's shop and confront JD and old Billy. Yeah, pretty Ricky. What's up, baby? How you like your chicken, man? Huh? Original extra crispy. Huh, bitch? <laughs> Mr. Wallace and Noob Sidebot <laughs> bust in the shop. Calvin says, I'm here to get my shot back. But I promise you that I'll get you all your money back. Let me, let me, let me get this right. You come in here demanding to get back a barber shop that you don't even have anymore. You don't have the 40 grand to buy it back. And you don't even have the 20 grand I gave you this morning? Yeah. Goon cuz ups the tool. Courage, no, what you gonna do? Go ahead, huh? do what you got. No, no, what? You're gonna have to use that on me, big boy. Cause like I said, I ain't going nowhere. And the laws bust in and arrest JD and Billy. Calvin ends up getting the reward money and gets his shot back. Get a reward if you turn this in. Did you know that? Hey, yo, Detective Williams, remember who found this? And that's the end of the movie. Martin Luther King was a hoax. Oh. Now, I ain't gonna lie. This movie is low key, you know what I'm saying? A classic, but I got my gripes. The only real plot of the movie is Calvin wanting to sell a shop, selling the shop, and wanting to get a shot back. The, the entire. ATM machine plot is literally just so Calvin can find it at the end and get the reward money and you know buy a shop back. Uh, I feel like everything else in between the you know selling the shop and getting the shop back is just sprinkled with filler, which in a sense I'm not too mad at because that's kind of what like barbershop is like, kind of just a bunch of random ass moments that you could you could basically write a book about of all your entire barbershop moments that you came across. You know what I'm saying? But uh. It was a pretty decent movie. Uh, the acting was good. Shout out to Cedric the Entertainer. He was really the driving force of the entire movie, uh, which I think was kind of, um, they kind of leaned on a little bit too much in the sequel, which I'll get to in the next video. Uh, but he really was a star of this entire movie. He, he held the movie together with his funny comical moments. Uh, shout out to old Rick. Shout out to old Jimmy. And shout out to Isaac, man. Shout out to Isaac. 
Oz was low key the coolest nigga in the movie, you know what I'm saying? But overall, I get a movie about a 6.5 out of 10. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, make sure you, you know what I'm saying? Follow, subscribe, like the video. Follow me on all platforms at Earl the Monarch. Comment which movie you want me to review next. And we out.